as always, we've got lots to talk about today. Princess has some really exciting big news that they just released today. We've got information coming in from several Princess cruise ships so that we can know what's going on. Also, some things to be ready for if you are planning to cruise to Alaska this year out of Seattle or Vancouver. I've got a new story to share with you that I find rather upsetting, um, so I'm not happy to have to share that news, but Gordon and I decided we should so that we can all be a little bit more well prepared and know what to look for and hopefully be a little bit safer when we cruise. Um, just so much to talk about today, so let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Tuesday, it is May 9th of 2023, and let's start off with the really exciting news from Princess. So over on Princesses, like just princess.com, they have a news center there where they occasionally do their press releases. Today they have a release that says that Princess Cruises is going to send the Caribbean Princess to home port in Port Canaveral starting November of 2024. Now, um, a few things. First of all, Port Canaveral um, in the news just barely overtook, well, it's been a little while, but they overtook Miami as the biggest uh, sorry, the busiest cruise port in the world. So Port Canaveral is officially the busiest cruise port in the world. You've got cruise lines, um, lots and lots of cruise lines that do sailings out of there. I know that we've got Carnival Cruise Lines, Disney, Norwegian, MSC, Royal Caribbean, and now in November of 2024, Princess will be joining that lineup. So the um, Caribbean Princess is going to do several cruises. They're going to do... Um, um, some shorter cruises, some longer cruises. In the press announcement for it, um, John Paget said that if you want to, you combine could combine two of the cruises together, turn it into a 14-day cruise if you would like to. They're going to have like a departure that's only a four-day cruise to Turks and Caicos over Thanksgiving. Um, the first cruise that the Caribbean Princess is going to sail out of Port Canaveral is on November 27th of 2024, so it's really not till the end of November. Then they're going to do departures for eight-day Eastern Caribbean with St. Thomas, St. Martin, San Juan, and Grand Turk. They're going to do eight-day Western Caribbean cruises. Eight days is always fun. It's like you just get an extra day. So those will include um, Cozumel, Costa Maya, Belize, and Roatan. They're going to do six-day Eastern Caribbean cruises that have the Turks and Caicos, including Nassau, Grand Turk, and Amber Cove, or San Juan. And then finally, um, oh, that's the thing I was going to tell you. And then the last thing is, yes, you can combine. Like if you combine the eight-day cruise and the six-day cruise, there you go. You've got your 14-day cruise if you want to go. This, I think, is really a huge step for Princess. When you think of Central Florida there, how many people there are that can just drive to Port Canaveral? You can drive to the other ports too, but it's just so much closer. I really want to get to go on one of these cruises. I am really excited that Princess is coming to Port Canaveral. Um, as our children were growing up, we went and took them to see Kennedy Space Center a couple of times. We were actually there one time to get to see uh, the, one of the space shuttles land. Um, that was really fun, but we've been there. We have been to Cocoa Beach and enjoyed the beach there. They actually have a street there called I Dream of Genie Lane. Um, if you're familiar with that old TV show, um, I Dream of Genie, it had the officers who were in Involved in the space program. It was, it's just really fun. Such a historical place though for me in thinking about that. And so we have driven past Port Canaveral and seen all of those cruise ships there. So I'm really excited to finally get to go and go on one. So I'm going to be looking for a cruise for us on the Caribbean Princess. But I wanted um, to let you know, and the other thing, now this is really, really interesting to me. So as we have talked about here before, and as you watch all of the marketing for Princess lately, they really are targeting getting a younger demographic than um like Gordon and I are and up. They are really going after more your late 20, like your 30-somethings, 40-somethings, I would say. Um, I would say heavily into the 30-somethings. Th like when you look at that Real Love Boat TV show that they did, they are really truly trying to get after, a you know, entice a younger demographic to come on their ships. But um, I've read several stories about this. Um, Jeffrey was nice and posted on our Facebook group. He's cruising for one, so go follow him as well. Um, 
<laughs> he posted an um, NPR story, I think is where it came from. Florida to Florida Today had a news story. So they had people um, there, and it was really interesting that one of them commented that during his comments about this announcement, John Padgett said, The Princess brand appeals to clientele who are looking to cruise, quote, as soon as your kids go to college and you want your first date again, rather than visiting a theme park at sea. So I thought it was really interesting and kind of awesome that maybe they're thinking a little bit more about our demographic. Um, I know my children are all college educated now, and um, three of them have uh, masters. One of them is a doctor now. So we're not quite in the demographic where we're just sending people to college, but I feel a little bit more included, and I hope you do too. But it'll be kind of fun. I am really excited. So put it in the comments, like if you live in Central Florida or if you would fly to Orlando anyway, that's another really big thing. That's close to Disney World. So people that want to fly into Orlando or drive to Orlando, go to Disney World things, and then they want to head over and go on a cruise, this will be really handy as well. So let me know if you're excited about this, if it makes you want to go on a cruise on the Caribbean Princess there out of Port Canaveral. If you've cruised a lot out of Port Canaveral, we're going to have to have talks about what we all need to know if we're going to cruise out of there. So put any put all that information in the comments there. I am really excited about this and looking forward to it. Now here is a kind of tongue-in-cheek thing about Princess. Last night during our live and um, our um, good friends, I think of them as dear friends, Code 4 for Life, so go follow them as well. They are on the Royal Princess. They were on the Eurodom last week to Alaska, and this week they're on the Royal Princess. But in our live last night, they mentioned that um, they are being served martinis in plastic glasses, not just at the pool, but at everywhere on the ship. And so um, we thought we were very indignant with them about this. Like, what is that? That's not what you do. Plastic glasses? No. I know that different people have things that drive them crazy, but a glass is a glass. And a plastic glass is not a glass. And so I think it's really important that Princess differentiate there. And I wonder if they had a glitch, but truly, um, to have thrown away or broken all of the glass martini glasses is a little bit unbelievable. So last night, Gordon, after our live, we, he was looking at the, uh, like the official Princess Cruises Facebook group, and he noticed that Don had posted, can someone from corporate please order some glass martini glasses for the Royal Princess so we don't get served in plastic pool martini glasses? And I am with a Code 4 for Life 100% on this. I just like to drink, the only time I drink out of a plastic glass is if I am on the pool deck of a ship, or at a picnic. When I'm home, I don't drink out of a plastic. If I'm at someone's home and they're serving me out of a plastic glass, I am really grateful. I am really grateful and it doesn't bother me at all. But I am not a guest in someone's home on a princess ship. That's the big difference. So I hope they can order some glass glasses ASAP and get them delivered to the royal princess. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do the story that I don't like, and then we will move on to the rest of our princess updates. So, you may have seen the news that a man was arrested after hiding a hidden camera in a bathroom on a Royal Caribbean uh, a Royal Caribbean ship. So, on the ship that set sail on April 29th out of Miami, this passenger was on Harmony of the Seas and went to a public restroom there on the ship and hid... Um, a camera where it took a couple of days for someone to detect they hit it and then recorded people either um, using the toilet or changing their clothes. And fortunately, on May 1st, um, another passenger happened to see the camera and immediately alerted security there on Harmony of the Seas, and um, they were able to remove it really interesting thing about it is like the first video was of the guy doing it, installing it, hooking his everything up and putting it there, hooking it up, I believe, to his phone so that, um, yeah. So here's here's why I'm telling you about this. And this person has been arrested. Um, I think they probably, they should get in trouble. They've got video of him installing the, the a hidden camera there. So the pictures are not mine to post here, but Gordon is going to link the story just in the drop down box underneath our video here so that you can go look. And the reason I think that's valuable is like, I'm going to start being more vigilant when I am in like a public restroom, whether in this goes to me, not only on a cruise ship, but anyway. 
anywhere. And it'll, it shows, they have a picture showing like right where the hidden camera was hidden so that we all know just to keep a better eye out because um, these people are obviously awful that do these things. So I just wanted to make you aware of it. I don't want to dwell on it. Um, like I said, he has been arrested. I am sure Royal Caribbean will never let him on one of their cruise ships. And I would like to think that all the other cruise ships would ban him for life as well. But um, I just wanted to let you know that that happened and to be aware. Now on to better news. Well, I don't know if this is better news. This is better news because it's fixable. So the Island Princess was just um, at the end of um, her world cruise was in Watulco. Well, took, I hope I'm saying that right. So many of you are kind and send me um, the pronunciation when I get it wrong. So I think it's Watulco there in Mexico, and they had a power failure. It took them like three hours to fix it, and then they were able to set sail, but then they had more electrical issues again. And um, the passenger who sent me this email said that in some of the cabins, a lot of the cabins, the air conditioning was working, but in their cabin it was not, for example, so they let them sleep in a different cabin, and now the power is back on in their cabin, so they were able to return to their normal cabin again. Um, just an update on how everything is going. It seems like there's been a lot of trouble lately with electrical problems, and um, hopefully they'll get all of those ironed out. Our group cruise is on the Island Princess is this year on October 4th, um, round trip out of Southampton up to Norway for two weeks to see the northern lights and so I'm hoping that they have everything ship shape on the island princess by then and um Anyway, and, and also I should add that this Let's Go family member, um, I really admire them. They were booked on that April 30th sailing of the Queen Mary 2 that was canceled. And so they just grabbed this cruise, made me really glad. They still got to go. Um, so happy that they went ahead and went. And so just I'm grateful that she sent me that update to let us know how everything is going on the Island Princess. And do let us know how everything else is on the Island Princess. We're excited to embark on that cruise in October. Alrighty, the next thing that I think we all need to be aware of about going to Alaska this year, embark whether you're embarking and disembarking in, uh, in um, Seattle or in Vancouver, things don't seem to be going perfectly smoothly all the time. Now, some people on the cruises that they have been on, let's start with Vancouver. They have said it was super slick. Everything went really well. We've got Let's Go family members um, that boarded. Um, they sent me this email on Saturday. And so they just were at the end of that day. So they just boarded in Vancouver, the Grand Princess, and it was a mess. They said that um, at the pier, um, like it was the worst experience they've ever had boarding a cruise before. So we're, there were three ships in port. There was also the Koningsdam and the Volendam, and another cruise line had a ship there as well, in addition to the Grand Princess. So they were really busy. He said the, he figures that how it looked and with the ships that were there, there were probably at least 7,000 people going through that cruise terminal to be able to get onto the ship that they were supposed to be on. He said it took two and a half hours to go through the princess check-in security and then customs and um, he said of course it was warm everybody was hot and tired by the time they got onto the ship and here's a couple of things that i think are really important take-home messages about this and we touched on this a little bit last night in our live so once again like go listen to our live if you missed it but if you are at all questionable if you can stand for a long time, or if you can, you know, walk for a very, very, very long time, order a wheelchair at embarkation. They will have a wheelchair there for you and they will take you to your cabin. If you order a wheelchair for embarkation, you don't keep it for the whole cruise. You can also order one for disembarkation because a lot of times um, people will need that extra help to get on the ship, but once they're on, they're okay. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that that is an option. You can do it. If you book a cruise with me, I'll do that for you. Um, or whoever you book with, ask them to do that for you because it's really important um, that... Um, I just hate to think of people that can't stand for a long time having to stand for a long time. Another thing, I've mentioned it before, make sure that you have with you like some snacks in your bag, a bottle of water, anything that you need like that, so that if it really does, you know, on your embarkation take two and a half hours, that you'll be ready for it. I'm hearing that disembarkation is going a little bit slow as well. 
Okay, really slow. So here's the thing I want you to think about. If you have booked an early flight, like be one of the first people off the ship. So how do you be one of the first people off the ship? First of all, you need to be off in that first group that they let walk off and take their own luggage. Don't put your luggage out in the hallway the night before. Keep your luggage with you. Arrange to be in that first group. And as soon as they announce that they have got the gangways out and everything, usually that's when they will let people leave. So be ready to go and get right off. And then you can go right through. If you get off and there are already really long lines in security, I know that in a lot of the ports, if you get a porter to help you with your luggage, they take you to a, another line and you get through much quicker. So see if that is an option there. I'm going to pay attention and see if that is an option in Seattle when we go on the Eurodom in just a couple of weeks so that I can let you all know. But really pay close attention so that you can get off and definitely be in that first group and ready to go. Every time um, that we have ever gotten off on a cruise ship there in Seattle or when I got off in Vancouver last year, there are um, lots of taxis there waiting. Taxis and um, you can also request an Uber. But if you're in a really big hurry and it seems congested, grab a taxi and just get going to the airport. So that's my suggestion for you. But anyway, so they ended up finally getting um, on board the ship, um, getting to their cabin and um, relaxing there for a little while. They, they will say, though, that the comedian that they watched was not really good. And they said that is an outlier that usually comedians are good. They're not. This was a terrible comedian said he'd been on over 300 cruises. So that is a little bit disappointing. Interestingly enough, I've got a um, review from someone on the Ruby Princess that I'm going to share with you tomorrow. And she said that the comedian on board was not good at all this last time as well. And they usually enjoy the comedians also. So it sounds like that they're in a little bit of a crunch with comedians lately. But um, anyway, they ended up having a really nice time, um, a really good end to the day um, on their embarkation day. They did comment that the internet is super slow. Now remember the Grand Princess is the ship that we are hearing that they've started to work to install Starlink. So clearly Starlink isn't working yet. Um, um, they said that the um, speed was 0 0.5 megabytes per second, so barely good enough for email. So he was hoping I got this. And so it um, sounds like the Starlink is not up and running yet, but we will keep you posted. So all of you keep us posted and let us know if um, you get Starlink at the, um, on this cruise that you are on. So I really appreciate you all being here with me. Thank you. If you are on a cruise ship or you've recently been on a cruise ship, any cruise line, we would love to hear about it. So please send me an email, put it in the comments. Don't forget to put in the comments if you, um, um, are excited about um, Port Canaveral getting a princess ship. I'm so excited. Um, I have to, I'm really excited. Those itineraries, by the way, have not been released yet. That's why I took the time to read through them for you so you can start thinking about it and thinking about what you might like to go on. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. We need to have you with us and I think you'll love being with us. Also, if you appreciate these updates, please give this video a thumbs up. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. Mm,